In Georgia's proposed 2021 budget, K-12 public schools could see nearly a billion dollars removed from the state's funding formula that dictates the bulk of education spending. School districts that have lower than average property values are poised to take a larger hit since they rely more on state funding to provide a constitutionally mandated adequate public education. Georgia is one of only eight states that do not provide additional funding to schools to educate students living in poverty. These students have significant barriers to education opportunities, not least of which is the lack of access to high-speed internet in the home during school closures. Further, as many people of color have been kept from building wealth in this country for generations, it is clear that the proposed school budget cuts will have the effect of disproportionately harming black and brown communities in Georgia. I'm Dr. Morcise J. Beasley, Superintendent of Clayton County Public Schools. We have about 55,000 students, about 70% African-American, 20% Hispanic, 42% of low income. 100% of our students right now are provided free and or reduced lunch. You should know that uh, as we are anticipating budget cuts that they'll hit us pretty hard. Right now, we're looking at a $60 million reduction in revenue. That includes uh, about $50 million at the state level, $10 million at the local level. And because of that reduction, we'll have to clearly cut back operational expenses. We've got to possibly consider uh, freezing salaries at a time when salaries should not be frozen. And if this pandemic continues and if we have to go deeply into our revenue as this drags out, we'll have to consider furlough days. We're considering these things at a time when students of color, uh, many districts primarily populated by students of color are receiving less funding, of course, as compared to many majority white districts. And so the, the, the budget cuts are going to continue to aggravate the inequities that already exist because of the systems that we have and structures that we have in our state and in our nation. So I just like to really encourage and, and, and plead that we find solutions first to fix the inequities and secondly to ensure that students in populations that heretofore were inadequately funded or inequitably funded are considered a priority as we work to close gaps in academic achievement.